Well, it would appear that the cold spell that we have got used to in recent times is finally starting to wane. Do we have even some hints of summer warmth as we end the month? Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well today. This is the last seven-day temperature anomaly across the continent with a distinct northwest to southeast contrast. And that has been the theme ongoing for quite some time now. So uh, you can see very warm conditions down across, say, Greece and Turkey. Very cool conditions compared to the time uh, of year and the last seven days over the UK and the near continent. This is the month to date temperature, so for through the first 13 or even really 12 days of the month, the UK and Ireland and the near continent firmly below average. So we did have an end to the streak here at Marvogan Weather HQ of temperatures no greater than 14.6 for a run of nine consecutive days with many days actually in the uh, between 12 and 13 Celsius for a maximum and mid to low single figures for a minimum. I think the temperature this morning dropped to 2.1 here at the house, colder than any day recorded during the month of June so far, but also during the month of May. You have to go back to late April for the last time we had a temperature as low as 2.1 here. Um, so, uh, so quite interesting actually, given the fact that June... Uh, June of 2024, this is obviously from a personal station, recorded a colder daytime high and a colder day, a nighttime low than any time in the month of May, which I would imagine would be a relatively rare occurrence. Also, Loch Lusgarnock is ending a run of nine straight days where the temperature has been no better than 11.3 Celsius. And this is actually quite an interesting comparison to Loch Lusgarnock compared to the same nine straight day stretch this time last year and you can see here anywhere from 17 to as high as 26 celsius on that same run last year so uh, we had several mornings one two three four so there was four days where the maximum at Loch Lusgarnock in the northwest highlands did not exceed um the 10 celsius mark and like i say the maximum over that nine day stretch is only a mere 11.3 Celsius. This is the current temperatures uh, at the time of recording, and we've got uh, as high as 17 or 16.6 at the uh, Altnahara, 14.9 at Loglas Garnock, and then as you progress south, uh, still relatively cool conditions through the central belt, southern Scotland as well, and then we've got temperatures into the low teens to upper teens further south and obviously these are slightly below average conditions across the bulk of england and wales ireland uh, generally kind of anywhere from uh, what 14 in, in the in the north uh, even 12 celsius in fact 11 celsius we've actually got at the uh, bally patrick forest but we've got as high as 19 at waterford airport so quite a range in temperature up and down both ireland and the uk this afternoon we continue to see this fresher conditions progressing south and east across the continent. You notice here that as this fresh air is punching further eastwards, we're starting to see temperatures rise across Iberia, but also the temperatures are probably pushing a peak down across Greece and western Turkey, where temperatures in Greece have been as high as 44 Celsius. Parts of a western interior Turkey has also been seeing incredible warmth. And then interior parts of a, of Israel, for example, we've had temperatures into the upper 40s and approaching uh, 50 Celsius. So pretty intense stuff. So anyway, do we have, I've, I've alluded to this at the beginning of the video, do we have hints of change coming? Now, I said to you that it was a gradual, slow old process in terms of seeing a change in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. That is changes that are taking place over the Pacific, over North America, that is then propagating into the Atlantic and across the European continent. Now, there was hints at at least a recovery in temperature as we progress through the second half of this week, into the weekend, and into the next week here. Now, we do have some blips, um, some little bumps in the road in terms of the temperatures coming back down slightly. We've got an area of low pressure that is going to bring a fairly unsettled 
pattern through the course of the weekend across the UK and Ireland, an area of low pressure kind of stuck in place underneath a, a rather strong, large scale area of high pressure. That has been the block and feature that has been dominating week after week now across the, the northern half of uh, Europe, trapping low pressure underneath, bringing lots of uh, flooding, severe weather, very, very nasty conditions across quite a large area of the continent. Some very nasty flooding parts of the Balearics, well, like I showed you in, in yesterday's video, parts of southeastern uh, Spain. We've seen flash flooding ongoing as well. As warm and colder mix, and it doesn't, it, you know, the atmosphere ex explodes when you've got that collision of air masses. But you notice here something where we're leaning the MGO more into phases eight and into one. That means that the enhanced area of convection is now uh, over the, the Americas and uh, extending into the Atlantic. If we have a better look at this, if we look at um, the, uh, the, the GFS 200 uh, millibar velocity potential anomaly here, this kind of shows you the rising and sinking cells within the, the around the planet and you can see that uh, as we play through this loop here so the greens represent rising or the oranges represent sinking or now as we play through this loop watch what happens in this region uh, between south america and north america we'll start to see uh, an intense greens appearing and what that suggests to me is that we're going to need to watch this area for tropical development here we've seen mega flooding Upwards of 25 inches of rain. Yeah, that's right. 25 inches of rain falling within a 48 hour period in Miami and South Florida. Major flooding is ongoing here. And reason, part of the reason for that is that we are seeing the uh, MJO active phase now moving into the Americas and into the Atlantic Basin. And this is having an effect on the pattern within the middle latitudes and the high latitude pattern as well, folks who have been stuck in place for quite some time with the MGO in the West and Central Pacific. It's now starting to progress into the Americas, into the Atlantic and in over Africa. That is likely to kickstart the tropical hurricane season, whatever you want to uh, call it. We are going to likely see the potential of development within the, the Atlantic Basin over the next week to 10 days and that will be looked at specifically on the saturday tropical outlook so stay tuned for that and also i've got the live stream coming up on sunday at 4 p.m as usual as well hope you can join me for that but you notice here as we play through this loop you see this uh, area of green continuing to uh, hold on in this general vicinity and then we start to see a little change taking place so what impact is that having on our part of the world, you're saying that's got nothing to do with here. Well, it has a lot to do with what's going on here. And I want to show you exactly how this is potentially changing the overall flavor of the weather pattern. So this is the, the, the ECMWF uh, weeklies, not the clearest of maps. I do apologize for that. I can't blow up any bigger than it actually is. Um, but I want to show you something here, a couple of little interesting things changing within the upper level pattern. This is the 500 millibar level, by the way. You can see here, this is looking down over the pole. So here's North America, Greenland, the Arctic, UK, Ireland, Europe here. We've got, uh, at the moment, we've got a trough over, uh, to the west side of Hudson Bay, extending down towards the Pacific Northwest. We've got quite a large area of high pressure over the United States here. We've got an area of high pressure extending from the central Atlantic all the way up through Greenland and into the Arctic region. So we still have that negative NAO pattern. Area of low pressure, trough, stuck, trapped over the UK and Ireland. So we're gonna have low pressure moving in. We are seeing that now. That is gonna be the mainstay of our weather really from late today, Friday, all the way into the early portions of next week. So going to continue to see unsettled conditions in the sun. It's going to feel quite decent in the breeze, in the charge. It's going to be a quite a mixed bag. But essentially, we've lost that northerly flow, that, that connection. But I want to show you the, the kind of longer term changes that, that could relate to something more summer like as we move towards the end of the, the month here. So if we look at the, the position of the troughs at the moment versus the ridges, so we've got this 
uh, trough, like I say, over North America. Uh, and you can see the, the other trough over the UK, Ireland and Western Europe. Now, watch what happens. Keep in mind the eastward progress of that enhanced area of convection, leaving the Pacific and entering South America and North America. And we're seeing some subtle changes taking place in the pattern due to that eastward progress of the MJO. Watch what happens to the trough over North America, more so that than the trough over the UK. Forget about that for now. But watch what happens. We start to see a jet becoming a little bit more prominent over the Pacific. That is then going to start to pull this negative down into the northwest of North America. What that's doing is it's forcing the high and the heat are out of the western portions of the United States, east into the eastern side of the country. So you notice here that we're starting to see this shift going on here in the high underneath the low. Then you notice here that we have the UK starting to lose the intensity of that, that uh, trough. Now this is day 5 through 12. So this is 5 day or 7 day increments. Keep that in mind. So it's longer term. But I want to show you the evolution of change in this pattern and how we could go from what has been a rather cool past week to 10 days across the UK and Ireland to something significantly different for the final week of June. This would likely be the final week or so of the month that we may start to see uh, some significant changes. So as we start to see this ridge getting pushed east over North America as the trough then drops into the western side of the United States. That then allows uh, a greater contrast in temperature and, uh, and uh, to the east of North America. That then starts to activate a jet over the North Atlantic that we have not seen. Notice here that we're starting to see that, that negative now starting to move eastwards Remember, keeping in mind what's going on within the, uh, the, the tropics here, Pacific, into the Americas, into the Atlantic, we're starting to see a jet become more active initially over the Pacific, now over the, uh, the, the, the North American continent and into the Atlantic Basin. What I'm getting at here, and I hope this is relatively clear to understand, is we're starting to see the ridge trough pattern change in position. We're now starting to see in the 8 to 15 day, this is the period between the 20th and the 27th of June. Look at what's happening over the UK and Ireland. As that negative now starts to move its way into the North Atlantic, we're starting to then deepen the trough where the high is at the moment. And as soon as you start to move that trough into the North Atlantic, you're going to pump the high over the UK, over Europe, over Western Europe. And therefore, that would allow our winds to become more southerly or southwesterly. So this is the period now, day 9 through 16, still a long way off, obviously. But this is Friday the 21st of June through Friday the 28th of June. And look at the positioning of the ridge trough pattern. We've now flipped the pattern on its head. We've got the negative where the, the ridge is over the North Atlantic, South Greenland, and we've got a high now over the UK and Ireland. And you guarantee that with a trough over the North Atlantic and a ridge over the UK, over Ireland, we're going to start to see warmer air moving north. And that is our door opening to something more appreciable. Let's have a look at the European view of this and see what's taking place. So this is the here and now. We've got the negative bank slap over the UK and Ireland. We've got the region surrounding us, east, north, and west. Now, given the eastward propagation of the MJO and the changes taking place over North America, then the ripple effect downstream over the Atlantic, watch what happens with the pattern according to the ECMWF weeklies. Let's have a look now at the temperature profile here. This is really interesting to see here. Back to the here and now cool in place and watch what happens we start to lose the chill over the course of this weekend obviously still below average 
but then we start to see a warming trend taking place. We don't have any kind of pain bomb raids or anything like that. Doesn't look as if we're going to have anything major in terms of heat, but nonetheless, this is a rather notable change. Let's have another look at this. This is the ECMWF, and this is the 500 millibar, or sorry, 850 millibar temperatures. So obviously, you look at the 850 temperatures as a good indicator as to what type of air mass you're dealing with. Up until now, for the last week to 10 days, we've had a general northerly airflow. High pressure to the west, low pressure to the north or to the east of the UK, and that's been continuing to feed Arctic air into the pattern. This is the here and now, by the way. So this is the, this morning. Still got fairly chillier in place. And as we play through the next several days, area of low pressure, now we're starting to see that ripple effect already taking place, given the fact that this low moves in over the UK and Ireland. You can see the change is taking place. Now, as we play through the course of the weekend, not an awful lot of change taking place. We've still got that low trapped underneath high pressure to the north, spinning away, relatively cooler in place. In the sun, temperatures respond, as we can see today, 17 Celsius across the north. Continue to play through. This is now us getting into next week, by the way. So this is now uh, out to the 17th of June. Still no change taking place. But watch what starts to happen as we move in through to the middle and latter half of next week. Remember that we've got the ridge of high pressure moving eastwards over North America. Remember that we've got the trough uh, now starting to initially drop into Western North America, but then it starts to relocate into the North Atlantic. Watch what's happening. We're starting to see the trough and colder air pull north westwards and to the west of the UK and Ireland. As soon as you start to drop that trough down over the North Atlantic, you're then going to start to see some warmth down here across the southwest of the continent lifting north. That is your game changer. That is the, the change that you want to see if you want to see warm conditions across the UK and Ireland. I'm not necessarily saying we've got a heat wave coming by any stretch, but this is a significant pattern change that has origins all the way back to the Pacific and through the tropics. And that is a very, very different look to what we've got now. Low pressure to the northwest between Greenland and Iceland. Ridging then starting to kind of build in over the UK and Ireland. South to southwesterly winds. We could be talking about much warmer conditions through the, the final week or so of the month. Finally, looking at the, uh, the temperature anomalies at the surface, and you can see here the, the change taking place. So this is a here and now, still blues on the, the chart here, as you can see. But as we rattle right the way through the course of the weekend here, we've still got fluctuation between high, um, uh, above average versus uh, lower than average. And then you can see the changes now. Look at the widespread warmth now starting to show up Sunday the 23rd of June. This is a rather interesting change taking place. So obviously the goal in the channel is to look at the big picture, understanding why we see the pattern as opposed to just it's going to be sunny, it's going to be warm, it's going to be cold and wet any given day. Understanding the, the why behind the pattern change and that is now is a good time to try and explain the change that's taking place because it is a rather significant change at that. So do we have some bona fide warm summer weather coming for the final week of the month? Well, I'm not necessarily going to go out on a limb and say that, but certainly I would suggest that we are going to go above average temperature-wise and we are going to see southwesterly winds and something a little bit more resembling the latter half of June coming up. So I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope it hasn't been too long-winded. And uh, like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. Coming up this weekend, obviously, I've got the, the Tropical Outlook, which should be rather interesting given the fact that the MGO is rotating into the Americas and into the Atlantic, we should start to see uh, some action uh, down within the Western Atlantic Basin, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico over the next seven to 10 days. And then obviously the live stream this upcoming Sunday, looking at all things global. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. See you all being well tomorrow with more. Bye for now.